This is Victoria Park in Bethnal Green, in eastern London. In the early part of 1943, part of the park was closed off to the public and a secret weapon was installed here. It seems as though on the 3rd of March 1943 one of these secret weapons was fired into the sky and made such a racket that East Londoners thought that they were under attack. Not understanding the noise they heard, some sought shelter which led to a tragedy without a single Nazi bomber being anywhere near. The secret weapon was probably this unusual looking piece of equipment. It is a Z battery, a short-range British anti-aircraft system, which fired 76mm rockets from ground-based single and multiple launchers. I have frequently come across recollections from World War II referring to home guard units being given a secret weapon which turns out to be one of these. The fact that so many people believed that they had been given a secret weapon appears to suggest to me just how well they kept the secret of the Z battery. There was also a surface-to-surface -surface weapon using the same principle, but here I shall just look at the surface-to-air rocket. This weapon had been developed in the late 1930s and had been enthusiastically backed by Winston Churchill for the Navy when he was first Lord of the Admiralty at the outbreak of war. By June 1940, when Churchill was Prime Minister, he requested large supplies of projectors for anti-aircraft defense. The weapon worked by bringing down low-flying aircraft with a trailing wire, at the end of which was a high-explosive warhead, detonated by a specially designed photoelectric proximity fuse which had been previously primed to go off at a given range which was determined by air pressure. The rocket was propelled by a special solvent-free cordite. The rockets could fire as high as 5,500 meters and when in ground use could reach a distance of 9 kilometers, but in neither case with much accuracy. The rockets were 190 centimeters long and 10 centimeters in diameter. The rocket projector was mounted on a steel pedestal which could rotate through 180 degrees horizontally and the rails could be elevated between 30 degrees and 80 degrees. There was a crew of two per projector. The commands for altitude, bearing, elevation, loading, etc., came by radio or intercom from the operations room to a headphone worn by a number one, who relayed the orders to a number two. Each man set a fuse, Number two loaded the rockets onto their guide rails and pulled them down onto the electrical firing pins and then set the elevation wheel. The firing pins were connected via safety switches to a firing handle and a 6-volt battery which ignited the rocket fuel. Number one set the bearing and reported that he was ready. On the command fire, he depressed the firing handle. Much like a bazooka, it was essential to get out of the way of the departing tail flame. If the rockets misfired, the crew had to wait 20 minutes before unloading. In October 1940, an experimental Z battery became operational at Cardiff. Further use at Merseyside showed that the best results were obtained by firing in salvos. The first victory was achieved in September 1940 in an attack on RAF Kenley, between Purley and Caterham to the south of London. The base was attacked by Dornier DO-17 bombers, one aircraft was brought down using a salvo of 25 rockets that deployed a barrage of 150-meter cables suspended on parachutes. From early 1942, Z batteries were delivered to the Home Guard, as the equipment was comparatively simple to operate, and the rounds were light enough to be loaded by older men as we can see in these photographs from Merseyside. By the summer of 1942 they were located in various places, such as at Rittle near Chelmsford in Essex. Four twin-barreled rocket projectors were located here, probably for training before being moved to a park in the center of Chelmsford. The sound of the rockets going into the air has been described as a hissing roar. This sound was so unusual that it probably contributed to people in Bethnal Green believing that they were under enemy attack on the night of 3 March 1943, when the disaster occurred at the tube station there and 173 people were crushed and asphyxiated to death and 60 needed to be hospitalized. However in all cases when the Z batteries were used, the RAF had to be informed so that no night fighters would be in the area. It seems as though there were many accidents, often resulting in the loss of fingers. It was difficult to set fuses in the darkness by older men in the Home Guard who may have already spent the entire day at work and were part of a Home Guard anti-aircraft unit at night. The timer worked by clockwork and I have heard an account of how a complete gun crew was blown up. Misfires could be caused by faulty connections or flat batteries, there was a danger in the propellant igniting whilst the rocket was being moved to a safe place. Rockets removed were destroyed by a controlled explosion. It seems that conventional anti-aircraft guns were more popular, maybe it was thanks to the patronage of Churchill that the Z battery was deployed at all. However by the end of World War II, those conventional weapons made this rocket-firing system obsolete, although of course, 
rockets were to come back in another form quite quickly.